wouldn't it be great if there was a way to authenticate a message someone sends to us, whether it's a file, whether it's a document, whether it's an email, and basically validating and authenticating that uh, the original file and obviously the original person that sent it. Well, my friends, let me introduce you to hashing. And hashing has been around for many, many years. Uh, and it's basically the process where we take an algorithm, usually a mathematical algorithm, uh, and then we take the data and it runs through that algorithm, which in return then generates a bit of uh, string value. And that string value is known as a digest, could be known as a hash. Uh, and basically it just represents the original piece of data. So let's just map it out down here together. Um, so we take a bit of data. Now this data could be, you know, an email, could be a file, could be a document, could be an application. Uh, it's just a bit of data. Um, and in this case, I'm just going to write a, a string of values. So let's just say, you know, the cat jumps <laughs> the fence. Okay, so that's a bit of data. Um, that data then gets put through a blender. So in this term, when we talk about blender, think of this as a mush. It's a, you know, we're going to put something in the blender. If you're going to make a smoothie, think of it like that. The data goes into the blender, it gets all mushed up, and then later it gets spit out into a string of values. Now we'll talk about the strings and, and how they're represented as well. Um, and here is our algorithm. And there's different flavors of the algorithm. I'll just change colors. So we've got MD5, we've got SHA, SHA256. And I'm just going to talk about them a little bit later. Um, and depending on what algorithm you use, there's different mathematical terms and how they sort of take this data and then the way they sort of spit it out into the text. And then over here will be our hash uh, or, you know, our digest. And that's usually, you know, your bit of string value. So in here, I'm just going to put a plane, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, just for representation terms. So that's our string. So basically, it's just then taking the data over here. We put it through the blender, which is our mathematical terms. And then it spits out the actual hash, which is basically the, the original representation. So this here would be the representation of this data as as it sees it, right? So that's just validating that the original data of this equals that. Um, so the purpose behind this is basically taking that original data, running it through the algorithm, and then out comes that cryptographic hash. Um, and then what can happen is, so some cost, like some companies you'll see where they have an application, you may download, you know, Google Chrome, and you'll go onto the web page, and over on the web page they'll have the string of hash of what that looks like. So what you can then do is you can go down there as you download this onto your computer. Uh, you can then verify that that hash is basically authentic as when they've posted it on the website. Uh, you can run the same algorithm. So you can run MD5, you can run SHA, um, and then you can you too can then also spit out that same value, which then basically validates that the, the application is in the same original state. It hasn't been tampered with, has been altered, uh, and it is true. And you know, obviously it's true to its form. So there's usually a couple of things. One is think of this as a fingerprint. And a fingerprint is validation. It's got the integrity. And it's proof. So all three forms of of the SHA value, if we're using SHA or if MD5, each one of them have their own obviously vulnerabilities to them. MD5 is not so much widely used. SHA1 is obviously a little bit weaker as well. SHA256 is more commonly used because it's got 256 bytes of, of an actual value. We'll talk about them in the next video when we run through a little bit of a demo. Um, but just think about this as in terms of a fingerprint. Now, also just take into consideration that the data itself, as we go run the hash, the data cannot be reversed. So it, it is what they what we call one way um, and it cannot be reversed. So we cannot take this string of value, 
running through some sort of digest again and then giving us the original representation of the data, that's just not possible. So think about this is just one way we can take the data, run it through the blender, we get our hash, which is great, and it cannot be reversed in the, in the other way form. So that's pretty much it about hashing in a nutshell. Uh, it's very basic concepts. Think about it in terms of fingerprinting. It's just an identification and a way to validate that the data is its full original self. Uh, in the next video, we're going to run through a quick demo. Uh, I've got a Mac system here that I'm running, and I'll quickly show you how we can validate these data sources. See you soon.